Hi, in this video, we're going to walk through how to use LoRa's in 1.2GP. In particular, we're going to be using a LoRa created using the AI toolkit by Ostris and using it in the 1.2.2 5 billion parameter model. So let's get going. First of all, uh, for this demo, we're running on RunPod on an A4B. I have a separate video showing how to get you going if you don't know how to get set up. So while our pod is booting here, we're going to connect to the terminal and then take a look at the LoRa that we're going to be using here. It was created by Ostris with the AI toolkit specifically for the WAN 2.2 5 billion parameter model. And what it does is it crushes things. You put in your prompt crush it and then it crushes the thing in the image. The file you can see is available on Hugging Face, completely public and downloadable. We're going to get this file onto our machine by using the Hugging Face snapshot download function. So you can copy and paste that directly from a link I will put in the description. And what it does is it just pulls it down onto our machine and puts it in the right place. Getting the file in the right place is crucial to making sure this will work. Where we want it is under workspace slash 12GP slash Laura slash 5B as in boy, capital B, because that is where 1.2GP is going to look for the LoRa. And we're going to list what's in our LoRa's directory. We see that the 5B directory was created. And then in 5B, there is our safe tensors file. Now we're going to go back up to the workspace level and tail our logs so that we can see them once we are running one two gp and it is ready connect into the ui and then we're going to select one 2.2 and the we're going to start with the fast one text image to video 5b these generations are quite quick and they're great for prototyping and seeing how things work the default is actually only three inferred steps so we're going to scroll down to our the advanced mode section and in the LoRa section we see that our one 2.25b image to video crush it LoRa is already there just great well that's all we had to do we just had to put the file in the right directory and it shows up under activated LoRa's and then we can just select it from the drop down then we're going to want to select our multiplier the default is one meaning there's a one strength of the effect of LoRa on our output video. We're going to just keep it at the 1.0 to start. We didn't actually have to write 1.0 in because that's the default. Great. We're going to select our start image, the thing that we're going to crush. And then we have this wedding cake that we're going to crush. We have to change our prompt to say crush it. Change our output to 9 by 16 to match the input image. And then we're going to generate. It took a little longer than it usually would because the model had to download for this first time. And then we see our Crush It video. Not bad, not perfect, but definitely crushing. To prove that the LoRa is actually having that impact, let's run the generation without using the LoRa at all and see what the output looks like. Click Generate. This is faster since the model is already downloaded and we see just some weird cake destruction and we do not see our crushing. So we can see that the LoRa was creating that effect we saw earlier. Now let's see what happens when we set the multiplier to two. So we want to double the crushing effect. So click generate. While that is running, I just wanted to show in the terminal here that not only is our crush at LoRa running, but we also see that the fast one full attention LoRa is running. And that's what's allowing us to create videos in such so few steps. That gets 
added automatically to the video generation because we're running in the original dropdown, the 2.2 fast one model. So let's go back to our results and we can see what double crushing does. We see that the cake is afraid and we see kind of two crushing plates and it's very, very crushed rather than just single crushed. Now let's see what happens if we don't use the crush it keywords in the prompt and say slice the cake instead to show that the Laura is you both have to set it in your settings and also call it in the prompt. And here we see that it didn't quite crush it. It's, it's like using some sort of cake slicer device. We do not get our desired effect. So let's put crush it back. And let's try with a different image. Let's drag in a giant green gummy bear. And generate. See the results. Timing's a little off there on the gummy bear cowers in fear, I guess, and moves away from the plate. We definitely get a crushing effect. Let's see what happens if we lower the multiplier. Click generate. Get a smaller crushing device. That output works, I think, quite well. It's interesting the multiplier seems to have an effect on when the hydraulic press actually hits the object. Let's also try doubling our inference steps to see if we get better quality. Since this is generating so quickly, I don't mind taking the extra time to do so, a few more steps. We see a more piecemeal crushing. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's necessarily better, but it's worth experimenting with. Now let's try running this with WAN 2.2 text to image to video 5 billion without the fast WAN LoRa to see what our results look like. Let's add our image of the bear. Uh, prompt crush it. Set our dimensions to 9 by 16. We can see there that this is 50 inference steps, so it's going to take quite a while. We see our LoRa there and select it. And since this is the, the model with more steps, we're going to use the mad cache to try to accelerate it a bit. And then set our seed to 42. For reproducibility, you don't have to set a seed if you don't want. And there's nothing magical about 42. All right, let's generate. The model has already been fetched to the machine, so it's just going to load it here. It doesn't take as long as it did originally to actually go get the weights. While that's generating, I'm going to show you in the Jupyter work environment where the models live to really drive home that it matters where the LoRa files are saved. So let's go back to our terminal, close out the logs. This doesn't impact the server at all. It's just the log output. And then we're going to type Jupyter server list in order to get our token to log into the Jupyter lab and copy just the token part of that URL and open that up, paste in your token. And then we can see in the file explorer in Jupyter that under 12GP, we have a directory called LoRa's and in there we have a directory called 5B and in there we have our two LoRa's files. 
the one that we downloaded, the Crush It Safe Tensors, and then the Fast Wan ones that the Wan 2GP automatically downloaded when we selected to run the Fast Wan model. We can see that there's other directories for LoRes, and it really depends on which model you're running. For the 5B Wan 2.2, you're gonna to wanna to put your LoRes here. For the other models, check the documentation on where your LoRes should be. So let's tail the logs once again, and we see that our model is running and it is 6% complete. And let's see what the 50 steps gets us. Generation time much longer at almost 10 minutes. But a nice output, a nice crush. Quite satisfying crush there. And to show it really is model specific, which LoRa's are gonna show up as options based on which model you're using. If we go to the WAN 2.2 image to video 14 billion parameter model, we can see that we do not have any LoRa's to choose from because we have not downloaded any and put them in the proper folder for them to be detected here in order to select. So that's it, I then, started crushing cakes and other things, I will do a follow-up video on how to apply LoRa's with the 1.2.2 14 billion parameter model because there is two sets of LoRa's you have to apply, high noise phase and a separate one for the low noise phase, and you can set the strength for each stage for each LoRa, so it gets a little more complicated, but this video should give you a good idea of how LoRa's work in 1.2.2 GP to get you going. Thanks for watching.